Welcome back to Africa 54. I'm Vincent McCory in Washington. Now, the head of the UN AIDS says testing for the HIV virus is critical in reaching the goal of eliminating the virus by 2030. But the UN official tells VOA the effort is hampered in many countries by social taboos and stigma attached to AIDS and other HIV-related diseases. VOA's Zlade Zahok has more. Just a few years ago, it was hard to get treatment for all the people infected by the virus that can cause AIDS and other ailments. But now health officials hope to eradicate the deadly virus by 2030. In 2001, in South Africa, we had only 90, I said 90 people on treatment on public services. Today we are talking about 4.3 million people on treatment. Michel Sidibe is a United Nations official in charge of a global effort to combat HIV. He says progress has been achieved through solidarity between nations and cooperation between the private and public sectors with more effective medication and availability of treatment. Most African countries are on track to control the disease, but not all. West Africa, uh, Central Africa, completely left behind. When we have 61% uh, uh, of the people on treatment uh, globally, we, in uh, this region we have only 35% of people on treatment. Efforts have to be accelerated in the countries that lag behind. We still have, uh, uh, you know, a low coverage in terms of treatment for children, and we need to really uh, accelerate our action on that front. Cultural taboos are another hurdle in fighting the disease. CDB says most African men aged 25 to 39 avoid testing for HIV because of the stigma attached to it and they continue to spread the virus unknowingly. He says in such societies the effort must be to make self-testing widely available. The family-centered approach and also community-based approach will become central to what we will uh, do in the future if we want to really reach uh, those uh, millions of people who don't know their status and uh, still continuing to infect other people. An upcoming UNAIDS conference will focus on improving prevention programs, especially for the most vulnerable groups, such as drug addicts, sex workers, and homosexuals. CDB says it is important to understand that HIV is not an isolated disease, but is linked to cervical cancer, tuberculosis, maternal health, and other issues. Since the first cases of HIV were reported more than 35 years ago, 78 million people have become infected with HIV, and 35 million have died from AIDS-related illnesses. UNAIDS started its operations in 1996 to spur local efforts and innovation that would ultimately consign HIV to history. Zlatica Hoke, VOA News, Washington. Nigeria prepares to accept the return on loan, the celebrated Benin bronze taken by the British soldiers more than a century ago, a compromise that could provide a template for the repatriation of other artworks seized during the colonial era. But should Nigeria accept the return of its own bronze on loan? 62-year-old Eric Ogwemudia comes from a long line of gifted metal artists from the Kingdom of Benin in southern Nigeria. He learned the skill as a child, working in his father's studio. Ogwemudia now has his own workspace in Benin City, Edo State. But most of the works of his ancestors are thousands of miles away in museums across Europe and America, after they were seized by the British forces from the Royal Palace of the former Kingdom in 1897 and are today at the center of a debate between Nigeria and Britain about where they should be housed in the future. If really they are bringing it, at least they should exhibit it for people to see it, especially we, that our forefather did the job. So we should be very, like me, I would be very, very happy to see that, yeah, this is the handiwork of my forefathers. 
from my great 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 grandfather. The campaign for them to be returned to Nigeria echoes other long running wrangles, such as the dispute between Britain and Greece over the Elgin marbles, and could provide a template that influences the way other disputes of this nature are handled. Campaigners say the artworks should be returned home, but the British Museum, where much of it is kept, has resisted those calls. I think it's very important that we are straightforward and honest and transparent about the ways in which uh, some of these objects have entered the collection. It's absolutely not the case uh, that everything in the museum's African collections was plundered or, or looted or whatever phrase you want to use, but obviously there are certain circumstances or certain events that happen um, and, and certain um, examples like the Benin bronzes where that material wouldn't have come into the collection in, that, in the same way today. And so it's right that we acknowledge and we're open and transparent about that. But it's really about us wanting to make the point that there continues to be a public benefit in people being able to come and experience these objects in this world collection. Apart from Nigeria, other African countries and former British colonies have begun moves to reclaim artifacts and artworks taken from them. Recently, Ethiopia called for the permanent return of all artifacts plundered by British forces in 1868 and held by the Victoria and Albert Museum, rejecting the option of a loan. It's time now for a short break. I would like to remind you to visit our website, ChinaCV.com, for news and programming around the clock. You can also find us at YouTube.com forward slash channels web. Still to come, Eritrea welcomes Ethiopia's Prime Minister, raising hopes for peace.